Bear with me one moment. Let's see, let's start this. And I'm gonna look at my phone every once in a while. Everybody, excuse me, just because I get the information and I get the, um, I get the questions on my phone. It's easier for me instead of doing a split screen. So I do apologize. So good Monday morning, everybody. It is about 11.31. We're on time. Woohoo! I've been on time for the past month, I do have to say. And for an Israeli, that's huge. Huge. Um, that is like my, my epitome. But uh, I have problems with that. So, uh, ooh, questions started rolling in already. People wow. are watching us. Um, this is a hot subject. And bear with me one second. There we go. This is a hot subject. Um, I'm Ronnie Starin. I am a realtor here in Broward. I handle all three tri-county, all three counties um, mainly. I handle my home these days, uh, but I am still showing homes, open house, virtual open houses. We just had a few new listings hit the market and we have a lot of things going on. So I'm always reachable at 305-942-7446. Today, uh, we're chatting with a pro. We're chatting with my friend Stacy, um, who I turn to a lot and I vent to a lot because my husband is breathing too, too loudly or blinking too loudly and I have two children and I have a job and I, I, I am at home and I'm an extrovert and I need to be outside and I am everywhere. So Stacy's gonna introduce herself, tell us a little bit about herself and then we're gonna dive right in. Hi everyone, it's a pleasure to be here today. I'm Stacy Lee Schnell, I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. Um, I have been doing this for over 25 years. I myself have been married for over 25 years. Um, I have two adultish children. I have uh, adultish. Yeah, <laughs> I have. I have a 19-year-old who's a freshman in college who is now back home doing college in my house. Um, and we have a son who is 23, um, and he. Uh, he lives in Montana. He's a journalist, so he and he's doing amazing. I was watching his his broadcast the other day. He's doing really good. I'm so Thank proud. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so yeah, he's a sports journalist. There's no sports right now, so he's uh, currently covering the governor of Montana. So um, that's a little bit about me. Um, I uh, used to work with. Um, adolescents and their families for years and years and years and years and then I had adolescents of my own um, and started to really say hey I really really enjoy working with their parents more <laughs> um, so I really uh, started honing in on working um, with couples um, and have most of my practice, uh, I would say probably 85, 90% of my practice is working with, um, with couples. Um, and then I also do a lot of work with postpartum moms, um, uh, some ADHD, some anxiety as well. Um, so, so that's just a little bit about me. Um, I am working from home. I, this is my, virtual office right here. I'm in the corner of my uh, guest, ha guest house, my guest room, so that I can do private uh, therapy. Um, not loving uh, doing therapy from home, but you know, I can't wait to we all get out of this mess and I can get back to my lovely offices in Cooper City. Um, so you're, you're like the rest of it, you're getting used to this new normalization. Yes, yes, trying, we're trying desperately. So I'm used to getting up and going to the office and um, you know, this this was my, our, my new norm was being an empty nester this year. So I didn't have to get a child off to school and all of that. So it was just all about taking care of me, taking care of, you know, my business, my, um, my husband, our house, you know, things like that and, um, and no, now, like we locked you inside a house. It's okay. Yeah. So and now we're and now we're all locked in, right? Yeah. So yeah. So I mean, it's been a month. 
we're all um, getting used to this new normalization. We're all getting used to this new vibe, this, um, you know, ordering maybe from food establishments and then, you know, coming home, eating home, being home, being with the kids 24 seven. And, you know, I love my children. You know, my children, I adore them. I have two little ones, well, little five and 10. And they are, they, they, they're the better part of my life. Um, yes, you too, David. I know you're watching. You're good. I, you're still in a good side of my life. Um, <laughs> but, you know, so I have three children and a dog because I have a husband. Um, and I am finding myself in situations in which uh, we got messaged about these as well that I am like, oh, my God, just leave me alone. Are we, am I alone i know i'm not alone because my girlfriends are like this you are so not alone literally two minutes before you and i got on this uh call my husband i, I came out to the guest house i said bye i'm going to my office uh, you know haha right and i come out to the guest house i'm getting all set up out here and my husband called me and said where's the sharpie Come on, you know where the Sharpie is. <laughs> like, the Sharpie is always in the, you know, the drawer where we keep the Sharpies, right? But um, yes, and, and maybe that wouldn't have annoyed me a month ago, but, you know, because my husband, you know, oh, all right, that's just his thing, you know? He's asking where the Sharpie is or where do we keep the spoons or whatever. Like, you know, dude, we've been living here long enough, right? But yeah, I mean, everybody, all couples are everybody is getting on each other's nerves right now and so even people without kids I mean it's not that my kids are special well, they are but in that regard yeah, I mean okay so so people with kids it, you know with little kids like you you know you have you have kids in school you have to get them you know situated for your homeschooling you know I that's not something you were used to doing and now you're doing that and you're still working from home and you're still you know managing your home and cooking and cleaning now and all, you know all the things you know we're just doing we're doing more now um people without kids or people with you know adults ish kids like me or whatever you know my my daughter can do her own laundry and she can, you know, cook for herself and whatever. But, you know, I, I'm, I'm, here's my, here's my, my go-to saying, my go-to. Um, when we're all on an airplane, remember those days when we used to be able to fly glazes? Okay. So, rem <laughs> so when we're on an airplane, what is the first, what, you know, when they're talking about, you know, the safety stuff, they say, Put the mask put on, on your own head. before anybody else is. Before you put it on the person next to you. Right. And right now we're forgetting to do that. We're forgetting to take care of ourselves, right? Because our self-care used to be, most of us, a lot of our self-care was out of the house, right? We would go get our nails done or our hair done or go to the gym or, you know, all the, you know, go get some healthy foods and, you know, all of that. Yes, we can still get healthy foods. We can we can go or we can get them delivered in and things like and all of that. Um, but we can't go to the gym. We can still exercise online, right? We we can still go for walks or bike rides or 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 go for a swim if we have a pool or whatever, right? We can still get some exercise. Um, but somehow something happens when we're home and we're like we forget about these things. We forget to start taking, to keep taking care of ourselves. Um, and so what I will say is remember to put all those in place, get enough sleep, get, you know, um, out and get some sunshine and some fresh air. We're living here in South Florida and we're fortunate that we have this, right? I mean, we were talking about my, my son earlier in Montana, right? A week ago, he was, you know, playing golf one day in shorts and the next day it was snowing, right? You know, so here we're lucky enough to be able to get outside almost every day, right? I mean, even if it thunderstorms probably an hour later, we're okay. Um, so, so, so you're saying, so in essence, you're saying that the way for us to handle most of this stress and most of this new normal is find ourselves and make sure that we don't forget to take care of ourselves. 
Yes. So yes. I'll give you I'll give you a good example, and you tell me if this is healthy. Um, I think it is. My husband needs to be busy all the time, all the time. Uh, so he taught himself, and he created a veggie garden outside, and yeah. he takes care of it, and he waters it in the morning, and waters it at night, and he has his things that he does. And he just, he woke up early and did the lawn this morning, which, you know, I didn't have to ask, which was amazing. Um, but, you know, so in a sense, find a hobby because you can't get out of the house. Right. Find a hobby. What your husband's doing is is perfect, right? That's something he's doing in the garden himself. He's getting fresh air. He has this hobby. Um, um, it, it can be simply taking an extra shower a day, right? Because when you're in the shower, that, that extra 20 minutes or whatever is just you time, right? Um, um, it, it could be uh, just sitting outside in the sun and, and reading your book or, you know, watching Netflix or whatever it is, simply just having some you time where there's, you know, which might be hard if you have little kids. Um, so, so, you know, they're up in the morning, you're not having that, oh, I can go drop them off at school and then I can take care of myself. Right. And so, so what happens is the only time that you have for you is when they're sleeping. Um, and that's the time that you want to spend on your marriage too. Right. So uh, there, there's, there's gotta be a little bit of give and take, um, you know, maybe um, for those of you with little kids, after they go to sleep, if you're fortunate enough that they're little enough and they're they're actually taking naps, you know, then maybe that's your you time. Um, and I know you want to try and probably get everything done during that time, but part of what you need to get done is you. Um, and you'll be, you know, better parents, better uh spouses you know if you're taking care of yourself um so practically what you're saying hobby and personal space personal find space your huge. find your personality find your personal space find where you want to go with yourself i i have a friend daphna that you know that day we were talking and she said you know why i go to the grocery store because i get to drive there alone and i get to come back alone and I mean, and she does the pickup. It's not like she's walking through the store. And and I understand that. That's that's definitely something. Um, that's definitely something that that we all need to to take care of. What about um, since in your scope, you're also very familiar with with kids and adolescents, which yeah. is a hard age to start with. What do you recommend for people with adolescents? Oh. Um, no. My neighbor has. <laughs> My neighbor um, down the street has three girls. I wish him good luck. Every morning when I see him going for a jog, I can understand. I no offense, I love the girls, but you know, it's a lot of work. It is. Adolescence is a lot of work. Uh, just being an adolescent. They're, they're, it, they're, teenagers are trying to find themselves. They, you know, the, the world revolves around you when you're a teen. And right now they have no social life, right? Their social life is strictly online. They're doing school online. They can't leave the house. I mean, my, uh, the other day, my daughter was uh, a couple weeks ago. She, she said something, um, and, and, you know, not the the high school mom in me came out, not the college mom, right? And and I remember cracking up when I said it. I'm like, you know, if you don't apologize, you're gonna get yourself grounded. And we both like started cracking up. She's like, what are you possibly gonna take away from me, right? Like, <laughs> I mean, the poor kid's car. I mean, not that she's going anywhere, but her car is, you know, three thousand miles away, even, right? Like, um, so so it it. Yes, adolescence is a tough, tough time. Give them their space, let them sleep, make sure they're exercising. I, that's a tough one, right? Um, let them be on their phones, FaceTiming with their friends, encourage them to set up some you know, Zoom calls or whatever with their friends. Um, it, it, encourage them to do like the house parties and things like that. Um, you know, so like our happy hours, you're saying let them do house parties. Yes, yes. Our happy hours are very happy. They, yes, <laughs> they, you know, they can play, um, they can play 
you know, video games together. Um, Fortnite is now a, a thing again, you know, which I remember a couple of years ago, everyone was like, Stacey, can you start a group, uh, you know, joking around, can you, can you start a group for, for, uh, withdrawals yeah. from Fortnite because these kids right. are going back to school and that's all they've been doing all summer. Right. So, um, let them play, you know, Fortnite because they're interacting with their friends or, or Xbox or PlayStation or whatever. I mean, Yes, do we want to limit screen time normally? Absolutely, but right now that's their only outlet. Um, and so. What about, so Alice is asking a question and sorry for not looking at you, I'm, I'm just reading off. Um, thank you guys, you can always message me privately. That's absolutely not a problem. Alex is asking um, his teenage son is Okay, his teenage son obviously doesn't want to, he's in the first few weeks was gung-ho, fine, I'll do the virtual school, I'll log in, I'll do this, I'll do that. And now he's like, dude, I'm over it. I'm done. It's, I, I, I'll do the work, I'll do everything, I don't want to log in. Now Broward Schools, just for everybody, because I got a call about this, Broward Schools is still taking virtual attendance, which you know, if you can't log into Canvas, what exactly would you like us to do? But, um, you know, they are taking uh, the, they are taking roll call, they are doing all that stuff. So we need to make sure that our kids are present. So what would you say to Alex? How can he handle that? That's, I, I mean, we're all in this, this crazy state right now, right? Like, so, so, is he getting his work done? Yes. Is he required to log in to, for, for if he's a Broward student, he's required to log in. And so you need to, as a parent say, you know, Alex say, look, you know, you're required to log in once a day. You got to log in, you got to do your attendance. You got to get your schoolwork done. But you know, it, it, if it's due, you know, at a certain time, kind of like a, the college students, it's due by this day. Okay, just do it by then and get it done, right? And and if your child is able, so this this adolescent age is is difficult because some are able to manage themselves and their time a lot better than others. Um, and, and, and that's just the state, uh, you know, the, the growth state that they're in. Right. And so, so you really have to, to figure out your child, is your child able to just say, you know what, that's going to get done. I'm going to get it done, but I want to, you know, uh, do a house party right now with my friends or play Fortnite or whatever. Um, but I promise that's going to get done. If you're, if, if your kid is the type of kid who is going to get it done, leave it alone. If your kid needs more from you to help you get them done, then set some limits with them, you know, say, Hey, here, you know, just like you would normally do, Hey, your homework needs to be done before you do X, Y, and Z, right? Your schoolwork needs to be done before you have a house party, before you, you know, go to sleep before, you know, before you go for a run, before you, before you, before you, before you, your work needs to be done and give them some very strict limits. Um, so it really just depends on your child and, and where they are. Um, teenage boys uh, typically like to spend a little bit more time alone in their rooms. Um, that is a, a norm when we're not in this uh, situation, okay? And so, so it's completely okay if that's what's happening, um, you know, and they're just coming out of their, their cave to eat and, you know, see you occasionally. Um, but try and encourage those teenage boys because they're not getting the socialization out school or sports or whatever their extracurricular are. So they shouldn't be up in their, or, you know, stuck away in their room, you know, 24 seven and just come out for meals. Um, try and do some activities as families too. Debbie's asking, um, there's a post that I'm reading again, there's a post that went around about recommended amounts of time for a child to be in front of a screen and, you know, even with virtual school and everything else. What's your thoughts about that post? Yeah, okay, so, so typically, um, I would say we should definitely <clears throat> limit the, um, the screen time depending on the age, right? Um, um, 
and 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 very specifically um, about 45 minutes before bedtime, all screens should be turned off because that blue light from the screens, the TV, the the phones, the tablets, the computers, all of that um, just stimulates the brain. Um, and so, yes, should in normal situations, should we limit? Yes, absolutely. But right now, that is their only interaction outside the world, right? Unless unless you're, you know, sitting in your driveway and you happen, you know, and or, or in your backyard and you're sitting six feet apart from, you know, your friends or whatever. It's, it's very difficult to get together right now. We're, we're all being told to stay home, right? And so, you know, what's to say, oh, you invite somebody into your backyard, they're sitting, you know, six feet apart from you. And then all of a sudden you're just like, ah, you're fine. I'm fine. Let's get together, you know, and then somebody gets sick. So we're all really trying to limit um, our social interactions uh, face to face and in person. So, so a little more screen time right now, I wouldn't be terribly concerned about it. I mean, I think it's more important to have the socialization um, than to have the isolation. The isolation can get a little bit, you know, um, scary for our mental health. So, yeah. So one of the one of the jokes that one of the memes that were going around, I think, in the beginning of this and the beginning of March, was about oh, watch out, divorce attorneys are just it, it. It gave like an analogy of divorce attorneys just chasing you and stuff like that. Nobody wants to be there. Nobody wants to get there. Um, you know, but when you're with a person 24 seven and you don't have your own space, I mean, I coop myself up in my room once in a while and David is with the kids and handling that and, and, you know, everything else. And, and we trade off cause he has his time. What do you recommend for people to do in order to make sure that they don't get to that point? Yeah. I mean, my, our thing is communication. Yep. Uh, we're big. I mean, you know me, I like to talk. Uh, we're big on communication, but how, you know, other people, something like a general rule, except, you know, finding the hobby and having your personal space, what do you recommend? Okay. So, so I always say that you should put your marriage as a priority, right? Number one priority is your marriage. Uh, believe it or not, not your children, your marriage. Um, your, your kids wouldn't be here if it wasn't for your marriage, right? So, so kids are a close second. We do prioritize them, but we have to prioritize our, our spouse and our marriage. And so, if we are taking care of ourselves, like we said earlier, then, you know, the evening, um, you know, go for a walk together if your kids are old enough to leave home alone. If they're not, um, you know, put the, you know, once they go to sleep, go sit out in your backyard and have a picnic. Um, you know, um, find a romance. Exactly. Find ways to, okay. Yes. Take a bath together or take a shower together, whatever. Like you guys have to have the romance there, right? Um, this isn't just your your roommate that you're co-parenting with right now, right? Like this is this is the person you chose to spend the rest of your life with. And and when you you know you're fortunate enough to become empty nesters again, like you know, I was a you know, a month ago, um, <laughs> you, you, you want to have that in common, you know, that, that, that life in, in common, literally we, we dropped our daughter off at school and we went on a three week trip and had, you know, she's like, I can't believe you guys are like, you know, across the world, you know, like, and, and, and we had the time of our lives, but if we had been prioritizing our marriage if we, you know we would have been strangers when you know we, the only thing we would have had in common was our kids um we we really enjoy spending time together um and setting those limits now too like you know now that my that my daughter's home you know we're back to oh you know we need to watch our Grey's Anatomy or well that's on you know the, yeah. the finale happened already but you know our, our bachelor you know blah 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 like our shows that we watch and he's like oh my gosh this is back you know like um <laughs> so compromise um, 
Compromise, don't say, compromise, don't say I'm going to come watch. Don't say I'm going to come watch a show with you, and you know you thinking he's going to come back in 15 minutes. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Oh, you're going to call me out on that one. Yeah. Yes. So, so last week, that's true. That's exactly what happened. So, so I, I actually totally messed up, right? Um, I said, hey, our daughter and I are going to finish watching this show. You know, it's we've got 15 minutes, um, and then you know. And, and what I was starting to say earlier is if you're setting that time aside for your kids, it's okay to then, you know, if they're older to say, okay, daddy and I are going to spend time together now. Um, and, and, and so that's this kind of thing that we've been doing with our daughter. But this one day last week, I did not do that. Right. So I said, oh, come back in 15 minutes. We're just going to, we have 15 minutes left of this show. Well, so the show left, you know, left, of course, left on a cliffhanger, and I'm like, okay, let me just watch the first five minutes of it, and I kept expecting him to come back in, and the next thing I know, I had watched another full episode, so an hour later, I went, oh my gosh, he didn't come in, where is he, and I, I said to my daughter, go, you know, go to your room, go do your own thing, or whatever, let me go, you know, I'm gonna, it's time for me to watch shows with daddy, right, spend time with him, and I went out and he was sitting on the couch just seething. And I'm like, I'm really sorry. I thought you were gonna come back in. I would have gotten off as soon as you walked in. And he's like, I, I don't get it, you know? And I'm like, all on me, I'm sorry I got, you know? And so it's really about the communication like you were saying earlier, Ronnie, like talking it out, apologizing, taking the onus when, you know, you do something silly like that and get caught up in something and exclude your partner. And, and, you know, I just needed to let him know, Hey, you're really important to me. And I'm so sorry. I messed up. I love you. I will be better. You know, I will try and be better and not get caught up in shows with your daughter so much. Um, so What's uh what's the biggest issues? I know obviously you cannot discuss your your clients or anything, and I'm not asking you to, but what's the biggest issues that you're seeing of people having? Um, of course, the stress in the beginning of getting used to, um, of getting used to a schedule that's different and everything else. But what uh, what other things are are happening that you think we could share with others? Yeah, um, communication is a big one right now. People are like, that's all I do is talk to him all day or whatever, right? And and no, you're really not just talking to him all day, right? You're you're not. Um, sitting down and, and talking about, you know, <coughs> your your fears about all of, all of this. How long is this going on? You know, can we handle this financially? What, you know, um, you know, are we okay? Like sharing those fears and, and hopes like, hey, when, when we're done with this, what are we gonna do? What's the first thing we're gonna do together um, when we go out? Um, you know, talking about your hopes and your fears and communicating with each other is really, really, really important right now. Bonding together, right. um, um, you know, having intimacy, you know, is a really huge one right now, having alone time because, um, you know, the kids are around all the time. So it's not like, you know, you dropped them off at school and before you, you know, uh, go off for work for the day or whatever, you can get a quickie in, right? No, you know, that, that, that intimacy is just, um, okay, the kids are constantly here. We, you know, and, and, and that only alone time, you know, if you have little kids is when they're at asleep. So then it's the balance of, Hey, I need to clean the house. I need to, you know, do the laundry. I need to, I need to all the things that I need to do. Well, yeah. Number one, you need to spend time with each other and communicate with each other because that intimacy is totally going out the window right now. I, I think there's something that you said a couple of days ago um, when we spoke last week, actually, and you said, cool it with the criticism. I mean, we're very much critics of each other. Yes. Um, and we, like I said, my husband breathes too loudly and blinks too loudly. Um, so cool it with the criticism is, is one of the ones that I think that you touched on, yes. um, you know, and I think, um, the other one you said to me and, um, 
And Stacy and I just for everybody, Stacy and I talk just because I vent and you know I need a friend to vent to. Um, and be uh, kind of like be more curious than getting upset if somebody's reacting in a certain manner. Be more curious and in, in why are they reacting that way yes. than getting pissed off and sorry, furious. I apologize for my language. Uh, getting furious and saying, okay, you know what, you, you're just get out of my way or get out of my sight or whatever it is. Um, let's, um, yeah, that, that, that's true. Okay. So, so cool it with the, with the criticism, right? Like stop criticizing each other. This is new for all of us. None of us know how to do this. Right. So, so us here in South Florida, we know how to pe prepare for hurricane, right. And stay put for a couple of days, maybe. Right. We, we can, we can work really well together for those, you know, hey, you go to Home Depot, I'm gonna go to Publix, I'm gonna go to Walmart, you know, whatever. And, and we tag team and we're good. And hurricanes, we're, you know, we can have our family and friends over, right? For, and, and all shelter together and all of that, right? Um, and everything's closed for, you know, maybe a day or two if it's a really bad one, you know, and we're, we're so, few years ago with Irma and everybody was uh, fleeing, right? Everybody was was told to evacuate, right? Um, I, I got a lot of couples telling me that um, it was a very difficult time. Um, that there was a lot of arguing. They weren't um, being a team together. And so I'm seeing a lot of that now. Everyone needs to be a team and understand we're, we don't know how to do this. We don't know how long this is going to be, right? And and we're, we have to have, okay, let's work as a team. Let's make sure we're talking together. Let's make sure we don't criticize each other. If somebody is ha having a bad day, go up to them and give them a hug and say, hey, what's going on with you? How can I help you? What's happening right now? And And chances are, you know, your spouse may just be, really worried financially, right? I mean, a, a lot of people are in a bad space financially. Um, your spouse may be like, just overwhelmed. Right. Oh and, and when, that, when yeah. are these kids going back to school? I can't do this. I didn't go to school to be a teacher, right? Like, you know, yeah. the, I have a friend that's resorted to saying, you know what, I, I just can't do this. He's in kindergarten. He gets it, he gets it, he doesn't, he doesn't. I hopefully we'll make this work, we'll figure it out. Um, I think one of the things that I'm learning from my friends and it's something that I haven't uh, spoken to you about is um, take your arguments elsewhere. Don't put you in front of the kids, which is really, really, really difficult to do right now. Don't argue in front of the kids. Okay, and here, here's my other thing, arguing fighting, as people say, for the fighting, I always say fighting, there's a winner and a loser. And we fight to win. So take a step back and think, do I really want my spouse to be a loser? No, I want my marriage to win. So stop arguing with each other. Stop fighting with each other. Start fighting for one another, right? It's okay to just Degree, just have communication about it. Talk, about it, listen to each other, validate one one another. Hear are the fears and the and and all of that that's going on, the frustrations and the overwhelmed feelings and everything that's going on right now. Feel it, share it, validate it, and 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 be in this together. Be a team together. What about um? being forthright and asking for what you want. If you really want something, come out and say it. Don't yeah. just, don't beat around the bush. This is not the time to beat around the bush about anything. You know, come out, say it, say what you mean, mean what you say and get it over with, which is very great for me because that's how I am normally. Uh, I mean, for us, this is a norm, that's a norm, you know, say, say exactly, it comes from where I'm from, which is Israeli, it's called Tachlis bring it to the point, say exactly what you want. Um, you know, people may get hurt, people may, you know, get offended at times, but 
you know, the intention is good. Well, so you don't have to say it in a hurtful way, right? Right. True. Right. I don't mean it that way. <laughs> right. Right. So, so yeah, say, say what you mean and, and, and clarify. Let, so one of the things that um, probably a lot of parents are learning right now is that kids learn in very different ways, right? And so teachers, that's why we're seeing a lot of like, oh, teachers, I love you, thank you. I don't know how you do this right now. Kind of, you know, thanks to teachers right now. Um, teachers understand, they go to school and they understand that they need to, to teach each child a different way. People learn in different ways. Well, people hear things in different ways, right? So, so, so they hear like and read things. I want to make sure this is very, very important. They read things in different ways. Even if your husband is in the next room and you text him and you text him wrong, reading is up to interpretation. I mean, I had a situation Absolutely. with that yesterday as well. Yes. I'll tell you a story about texting in, 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 in a minute, but so, so people read and interpret com conversations in very, very different ways. And so, so one of the things that I tell couples all the time is one of you be a speaker, you know, the, the, and one of you be an active listener. Don't interrupt the other one, just hear what the other one is having to say. And then say to that person, what I heard you say is this, did I get it right? And if you're the speaker, don't get frustrated, angry if they didn't get it right. Say it a different way. Be patient and explain what you need and what you want. And let the, okay, so what I heard you say is this. Did I get it right? Yes. And validate the person. Okay, I completely understand where you're coming from. I feel you. I, I'm sorry I said that or did that or whatever. Um, validate them and let them know that you really understand them. It doesn't mean that you actually have to be um, agreeing with everything they say, right? I, I, marriage would be really boring if for almost you know, my husband and I will be married 26 years this summer. For 26 years, do you think I agreed with everything that he said? No, but I appreciate what he says. I validate what he says. And, and it's okay to have, uh, to, to have differences of opinion. You know, that way life isn't boring. Um, but yes, appreciate, what, appreciate each other, validate each other, understand where the other one is coming from. Um, there was something you have oh texting okay so text messages i always tell couples text messages are typically when we're out of the house for hey um can you pick up milk on the way home uh i'm stopping for gas on the way home blah 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 right like it's quick little communications it's not for major conversations because things can get totally taken out of context right. um one time, uh, many years ago, um, uh, somebody asked me if my daughter was coming to something and I'm like, no, th no, thank you. Like I meant no, thank you for asking, but I forgot the, to put the asking part on there. Right. And the, 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 the person was so furious with me. She took my no, thank you as a no, thank you, like nasty. And she was so angry with me. Um, and, and so she took it as a, you know, offensive. Like off. she got offended. Yeah. yeah, she got offended. Um, so, so text messages really should be for, you know, not for communication, per, I mean, not for, for, for conversation purposes, you know, it should be for very, you know, um, Hey, this is what's going on. Can you do, you know, I'm stopping here. I'm getting this, um, you know hey, the kids are asleep, meet me, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. It should not be for, yeah. Gotcha. So not for telling him, hey, can you feed the kids there while you're in the kitchen and I'm just laying around doing that. Um, yeah, that's fine. I got it. Yeah, no, no, that, yeah that, that actually can be okay. Hey, you're in the kitchen. If the, you, can you give the kids something to eat? Um, I'm taking a few minutes break. Absolutely. That's, that's fine. The, it shouldn't be for full on conversations. Like, you oh, know. Okay. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. 
So, I mean, except marriages, I think all of the things that you're saying, the personal space, uh, make sure you take care of you, the communication, 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 which is one of my biggest things, communication. Um, and, you know, making sure that we're all, you know, making sure that what we say all the time is that we're all in this together. We're, there's, I mean, there's a lot of differences between each household, you know, um, and some may feel this a little bit worse than others. Some may not be working at all. Um, you know, they, there's, there's a lot of stresses that are around us, but we need to just to kind of synopsize it. We need to make sure we take care of us, take care of you, take care of you as number one, your marriage is number two, and believe it or not, your kids are number three. Mm -hmm. You know, that is your, your kids adjust amazingly. Mine have adjusted, you know, they hate it. They want to go play with their friends, um, but they've adjusted and they know this new circumstances and, and they know now they're partying because they're like, oh, we don't have school until the end of the year. I'm like, actually you do tomorrow at nine o'clock in the morning. Um, you know, just adjusting. I think this is, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong again, is that people don't know how to handle changes very well. Mm -mm. And, um, you know, and again, not expressing uh, any, any political or any other um, kind of opinion, but for example, the protest yesterday that I was watching, um, my friend, um, <clears throat> my friend and one of my clients, Randy, is a nurse at one of the memorial hospitals and i'm watching this and people are protesting against staying home because they can't handle the changes um they are they are not um you know they, people need to realize that it's a part of learning how to adapt with change yeah yeah changes changes hard changes hard. hence why being an adolescent going back to that one is so difficult because there's the major changes happening in life at that time but yeah change is hard we don't know how and, and the other thing is uncertainty is hard and right now we just don't know how long this is going on um and so so we're we're doing the best we can we're 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 staying home um you know, uh, for instance, I'm, I'm considered an essential worker, I could be at my office seeing people face to face. But that's not the safest, brightest thing to do. The safest thing to do is for me to see them like this, as much as I don't like it, I like the face to face in the therapy room much better. But I'm doing this to do my part, right? And, right. and we all have to understand that. And little kids, it's really hard. If you have toddlers, how do you explain to them, you know, that they can't, they can't go to their school or their, or their gym class or their music class or whatever that you're normally, you know, their mommy and me, or they can't see their grandparents or, you know, it's hard for them. They don't get it. And, um, you know, I, I, I said the other day um, to, to my other therapist, I'm like, oh, you know, we have a private little Facebook group for our therapist. I said, post a picture of you guys working from home. And one of my therapists posted a picture of her toddler on her back. And she says, my boss won't get off my back today. Um, but it's hard. It's really difficult. If you have little ones, they don't get it. Um, teenagers are, yeah. Sorry to cut you off. I yeah. think it leads us kind of into the next subject. And somebody had asked about this is how, how to help people that may be in a toxic environment, abusive relationship, especially now that we cannot leave and we cannot do anything. What, what do you recommend? That one worries me uh, about anybody, be it in our group in Cooper City Buzz, be it at anywhere that I, any of the groups that I belong to or any of the people that I talk to, how do we handle this? You okay. can't go yeah. anywhere. It's it, it, it's um it's really serious. Um, right now we are we okay. So we're gonna talk really serious for a minute, moment. Right now we are seeing an uptick in child abuse. We are seeing an uptick in domestic violence. Um, and what I would say is, if you are in a relationship that is a physically abusive, get out. There is help. Um, it, it's much better. What do we call? 
who do they call? Who, what, what can they do? I mean, it's very scary to be in a situation that, okay, you're going to be put in a shelter that you may have to check out and check back in every day, which is the norm. I mean, what can be done? Right. So, so here in South Florida, women and women in distress is, um, is a shelter will take you and your children in. Um, and so you call, um, you call women in distress, you call the police, um, and you, you, you call a friend, you call somebody and you get out. Um, and so that's, that's one thing to do. If that is the case, if this is, if there is, um, domestic violence going on, get out of the house. Don't stay in that. Now, if you're talking about yeah, verbal someone, or physical, it doesn't, it's the same thing, right? Yeah. If you're in a, in a, toxic relationship let's say you're in a relationship it's not it's not necessarily abusive physically or you know emotionally beating you down and things like that um if it's just relationship that let's say it was already heading towards divorce right you guys are just not getting along anymore right um this is going to be exacerbated at this time um and so figuring out hey can we afford to live apart right now Maybe it's time to get, you know, that legal se separation. Um, uh, uh, if we can't, then finding separate spaces in the house to, to you know, to separate that way. Um, and and if, if the two of you have children together, um, you know, maybe if, you, if you're fortunate enough to, to be in a, in a situation where you can split up what bedrooms you're even sleeping in or whatever and have your just personal space away from each other and and kind of co-parent um and get along that way and just really separate from trying to to um don't don't battle each other it's not worth it right now so at this point i would say you know separate in the house but those are for people who are already you know hey this relationship isn't working it's not healthy it, you know it, that's very separate from i'm not telling anyone anyone who is being abused get out of the house call for help um call 911 call the police call women in distress um i wish i had that phone number um on me um um, maybe you can post it in the, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, anyone, it, why we're talking about these serious things, the other thing that we're seeing is, um, uh, you know, this isolation leading to really severe depression, um, and, and potentially people and, and severity and potentially people, um, um, harming themselves, um, and taking their own lives. And so, so there is a suicide prevention hotline also, um, if you want to post that. Um, call 911. Um, do not end your life on this. Um, we are going to get out of this. We just don't know when. Um, and definitely get help if you're feeling that way, if you're feeling super anxious, super depressed, reach out. There are many therapists who specialized and will be able to help you with this. I want to, I want to extend something and, you know, people know that I'm, I'm, I'm more than happy to help wherever I can. If you're in such a situation and you feel that you cannot speak to anybody that you know, or you feel ashamed or whatever it is, please, I am always reachable. I sleep very little. I can be reached at 305-942-7446 or through any of the social media um, lay outlays that we have. Um, you know, I'm more than happy to help if I can. Um, okay, if so you need them, here's, here's another thing that, that I actually posted on my, my personal Facebook page. So some people may feel that, um, they're in such an abusive relationship that their, that their text messages or, you know, uh, or whatever is going to get read, um, if they reach out and, and, and they're fearful to reach out for help. So, so it, so I posted, if somebody asks me for a carrot cake recipe, um, send me your address so that I can send you the, the recipe. And I'll know that you really, really need help. 
that you need to get out of the situation you're in and I will call the police for you and send them to your that's a great idea that's a great so, idea I will actually right? share that with all yeah. So, cause some people fear, like, what if the police, you know, don't come? What if, what if they come and say, Hey, just stick this out. You guys are going to be okay. We're not going to take anybody or whatever. And then the abuse gets worse. Um, a couple of years ago, we had something that, um, and not speaking ill of anybody, we had uh, a situation and in, in the group that I'm managing Cooper city buzz that, um, the person who no longer lives here, she's moved, um, she's moved up North. Um, she was in an abusive relationship. Unfortunately, the person she was married to was a uh, first responder. She was scared that somebody will tell them and everything else. Um, she did reach out to us and we did get in touch with uh, appropriate people. I mean, we did have some backlash on that, but you know, it doesn't matter. What matters here is you. What matters here is that you're not in that situation. I'm very candid about, um, you know, many, many, many years ago, over 20 years ago, being in a relationship that was very abusive, um, both verbally and, um, sorry, uh, both verbally and uh, physically, you know, every time he would drink, he would, he thought it would be fun to hit somebody um, and that somebody was me. Um, so, um, I, I, everything was fine and dandy until I responded and I broke his nose, I broke his jaw and, um, you know, I fled. Um, it didn't take too long. It took two times, two to three times for this to happen. Cause the first time I was like, oh, he's just drunk. Yeah. And the second time was like, oh, well, this is alarming. And, you know, I fought back and the third time was what it was. Um, you know, but you learn from that, obviously, that's why I'm very open to listening and trying to help and, and trying to do whatever it is for anybody. Um, seriously, anybody who needs help, um, the number to women in distress, <clears throat> excuse me, the number to women in distress is 954-760-9800. They are in Margate on um on uh, uh, Route 7 in Margate, so I can give you all the information if you need it. If you're scared of calling me or messaging me, like she said, like Stacy said, sorry, um, I'll post something that would be like our code word. Anybody. I mean, Stacy's open to it. I'm open to it. I'm sure that there's so many people that are out there that are, are, are in need. Um, I say to people, learn from, from others' experiences. It only takes once. Mm -hmm. It really only takes once. It shouldn't be more than that. Talking about that, there's some people that are going to say, okay, it's once, it's not going to happen again. How do you diffuse uh, a situation? How do you, um, how do you diffuse conflicts? I'm not saying conflicts that get to be abusive or hitting or anything else, but conflicts in general, how do you diffuse them? Um, personal space. Right. So, so you're, you're talking about a um, uh, difference between a couple where, you know, this, this is not the norm. This is not abusive. It just, it's getting out of hand kind of thing. Is that what you're talking about? Well, not, not only it's any conflict. I think the person um, that was asking was just asking in general, how do you diffuse a conflict? I mean, we're all getting into fights. We're all getting into okay. fights so over stupid stuff. Ooh, okay. So, so one of the things that I, that I tell, um, couples all the time is have your own, um, safe word or phrase, and it should be something a little bit light and funny. Right. Um, so, so if you have that little funny thing, it's better than saying, stop what you're doing, because when you say, stop what you're doing, your partner just keeps going. They're, they, they're not feeling heard, right? So if you both agree on the, the stop sign word or phrase or whatever, and it's something kind of funny, like, hey, would you like some cookies with that, right? Um, you know, it, 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 you guys take a break. It's a bookmark. It doesn't mean you're not going to discuss what you were discussing, right? It means that you're going to go to your separate corner, so to speak, right? Go to separate rooms in the house. Somebody go for a walk. What? Somebody go for a shower. Whatever it is, have some like you know 
10, 15, 20 minutes, 45 minutes, if it's really heated, right? Um, to, to, to calm down, to get your thoughts together and then come back together and, and talk the way I was saying earlier, right? Hey, this is what's going on for me. The other one listens, the other one, you know, this is what I heard you say. Um, and, you know, and then validate, you know, did I get it right? you know, all those steps that I was talking about earlier. So, so conflict is inevitable, especially right now. Um, so we just need to make sure that we do go, going back to the beginning, beginning of this conversation, right? Um, is having that personal space, having that personal time so that you can, um, so, so when your spouse is blinking um, or breathing too loudly, um, you don't feel like, you know, lashing out, right? Because that, 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 that's not gonna do any of us any good. Um, so so let's, let's take that personal space, keep things a little more calm in the house. Um, another thing to do is um, routines right now are just all over the place. So if we put some routines in place, that's going to help. You know, we get up at a certain time every day, um, just like we did before this, right? And, you know, we get ready, we take our showers, we, you know, get dressed, um, um, we have our breakfast together, whatever the routine is, the kids start doing their, their schoolwork. Uh, we do our work. We maybe come back together for lunch. Um, but, but to have some, some boundaries and, um, um, some routines in place will really help with these, um, conflicts of, you know, he's getting on my nerves cause he's breathing. Um, those things will be, um, uh, less, uh, prevalent, right? And the, and the, and the true conflicts will be, you know, the disagreements. So, so that goes back to don't argue in front of the kids, right? Don't let's not air the dirty laundry in front of the kids, right? If you don't agree, and I will literally tell you guys an absurd story that actually happened. Um, yes, I can be a hothead sometimes. And really, yeah. And, and several years ago, um, I was, had been working all day and I remember saying something to, to, um, I, I remember telling my daughter, make sure the dishes are done before I get home. Right. And when I came home, my husband, my son, they were, you know, this, this is a long time ago because my son was home. Um, they were all, and my daughter, everybody was sitting in the family room playing watching TV, having a good old time. And there was stitches piled up in the sink and, um, and I lost it and I grounded her for life. Um, and so instead of my husband, um, saying, come on, calm down. Don't, you know, you're not going to ground her for life because, you know, that's ridiculous and blah, blah, blah. He, um, he basically stood right behind, beside me, um, let the, you know, scenario play out, you know, agreed that she was grounded for life, even though she really wasn't. And, um, and then we went into our room and I, you know, went to the bathroom, I changed my clothes, whatever, I calmed down a little bit. And he's like grounded for life. And this was the two of us like private, right? Took it behind closed doors. I'm like, yeah, that was ridiculous. You know, I totally lost my cool. And he's like, all right, so, you know, what do you want to do? And we discussed it, you know, behind closed doors. And then we went out and presented to her, you're grounded for tonight. You got it, you know, blah, blah, blah. And we can move on, you know? Um, and so we're, we're a team. Um, and, and kids need to hear that. Um, and so always go behind closed doors as a couple to discuss what's going on with the kids. Back each other up in front of the kids, even if you don't agree. Remember my ridiculous story. Um, and, and then go behind closed doors and talk about it and, and come back and present it as a team together. We have the advantage, we use a different language. When I don't agree with them, I'll say, yeah, 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 I agree with you. But then I, I like talk to him in Spanish and be like, what the hell is wrong with you? Calm down. <laughs> um, so that's a little bit of an advantage, but that's always fun. So Stacy, just to, it's been an awesome hour. We truly appreciate you. Um, Debbie and Lisa were asking the same thing. They asked if we can kind of synopsize what we said. Um, first and foremost, um, we, I think that it is important to understand that if there is abuse, be it verbal, be it anything else, please, 
if you cannot reach out to um, to women in distress, or it's actually, believe it or not, women in distress do take men as well. Um, they do take the calls from men and they do try, they, they help men as well. Um, their phone number is 954-760-9800. Or seriously, call me. I will get you in touch with the right people. I will get help for you. If you do not find a way to say it without saying, you know, I, I um, you know, he's, this is what's happening. And if you're scared, I'll find a way. Um, I'll post something later on today on my personal profile, which is open to the public, which will say, you know, um, call me and ask me for ABCD and I will understand already. Um, that's something that we just learned from Stacy. Um, another thing is that communication, be it with your children, anybody in your family, your cousins, your children, your parents, yourself, your spouse, that is important. It doesn't matter. That goes, as Stacy said, that goes for any time, any time that, um, that you're in a, any situation, even when this pandemic is over, which it's coming, I swear, it's going to be over. Um, you know, communication is key, always, always, always key. Um, right now, for the, I took notes, for the way and everything that's happening, it's important to have your personal care that you still take care of you, you still uh, worry about you as number one, your spouse, number two, your children, number three, and the rest of the world is number four to a trillion. Um, you know, I, I had mentioned find a hobby. Stacy agreed. It's a good thing. My husband took up gardening. Not for me. I don't, I mean, I have a green thumb when it comes to uh, plants, not when it comes to veggies. I'm okay with that. Um, and then, you know, plant, plan plan, 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 and diffuse anything, you know, kind of like uh, you'll be able to, to review this whole um, chat that we've had. Um, and Stacy gave some great pointers and some great things. Listen, as we say every time, we're in this together. You know, if I could send you all a virtual hug, I, well, I can send you a virtual hug, hello. Uh, <laughs> Um, you know, our virtual hugs are here. Our, our, our communication is here. We're always available to help. Stacy's available. And, um, you know, I'll put a link for her information with her information on my site, on my page, on my site, on my YouTube as well. And I'm always available. Listen, I'm not a therapist. I'm far from it. I probably need therapy, but I am always open to communicating and to helping and to trying to try to, to, you know, to facilitate a situation, diffuse a situation. So on that note, Stacy, honestly, thank you so much. I know you're mega busy. A lot of people are calling in and wanting to talk and wanting to figure out where things are going. We appreciate you. Um, thank you for your Arizona Devil um, for allotting us this time as well. I was an ASU baby as well. Um, ASU and NUE, you know, I'm a rebel. Um, you know, and thank you for sharing from, you know, your experiences and, and what's happening. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, if anybody needs anything, just reach out. We are here for you. It, um, CWCSF uh, Counseling Wellness Center of South Florida is right there in Cooper City. And we, um, we have over 20 therapists. So it's not just me. We're here to help you. We're doing uh, little tip minutes three days a week. Um, so you can fo follow us on um, our Facebook, Counseling and Wellness Center of South Florida. Um, you can follow my Facebook page, Stacey Leishnell, MSCS LMFT, um, and get those free tips Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays. Um, we're also doing free support groups. We have one for um, college students who, or young adults who are back living at home with their parents. Ooh, um, we didn't touch on that, but that's a big one. Yeah, that's on uh, Fridays. Um, we have one um, on Mondays with um, uh, two phenomenal therapists of mine, other marriage and family therapists um, for couples at 7 p.m. on Mondays. Um, and then we have, uh, three that we're doing right now for our healthcare providers. So all, and we have a new mom's one coming, um, uh, next week. Um, so we have these free support groups that we're doing during this pandemic, um, reach out to us. We're happy to help you. Um, we know that, um, financially things are stressful for people right now. So we're trying to do our best to give back. 
And if you could provide me with that list, I will post it as well and post it, um, be it on my groups, be it on my on my personal page and my, um, I'm borrowed, oh, I can't talk, borrowed home by Ronnie B. Starin at um, g &E Realty or Cooper City Homes, Ronnie B. Starin, g &E Realty. So thank you again. We truly appreciate you. We'll be back next week for another chat with a pro. Stacy, thank you, thank you, thank you. We will talk Thanks to you for soon. for having me. All right. Bye-bye. Okay.